Hello and welcome everybody. This is another one of our top 16 matches for the Discord League. I'm your host, Rega, as usual. Today I'm casting with my friend, CJ. Uh, CJ, uh, here watching some uh, Crane versus Phoenix. I fight dragons. Travis, as some of you guys know him, uh, playing the Phoenix. And Mechanicus, Luke, on the Discord, is playing uh, Crane. Yeah, it should be an interesting matchup. Uh, the players are already doing all their mulligans. Uh, they did some deck checks before the game started, so this should be a very good matchup. Two very skilled players. I was joking. Yeah, and it's uh, it's not a lopsided matchup. Uh, Phoenix or Crane, obviously being a strong political uh, clan, Phoenix being able to match them and uh, wanting to honor themselves, so that can kind of create some con or some. Uh, complications on the side of the crane trying to keep their cancels online yeah yeah definitely there, there's some tricky things that they can do and we have both players deckless and uh like you mentioned before the match we have five mirror modus furies in this matchup so we should see lots of bowing as well as the uh, display of power shenanigans on the side of shiba travis yeah the interesting thing about mirror modus fury coming out of phoenix is that you can uh, lose an uncontested uh, conflict without breaking a little bit easier when you have Miramoto's Fury. And that allows you to, of course, then play Display of Power without losing a province for it. Definitely. Uh, it looks like the players have flipped. We're going to catch up real quick. So it looks like a pretty strong start for Kray, and he's got a Brash Samurai out. He just brought out Kokita Asami. And on the Phoenix side, we see a Naive Student. Uh, as well as Masahiro himself. Um, Phoenix, excuse me, Phoenix Shiba Travis is on one honor, so it looks like, excuse me, one fate. So it looks like he will pass first, and we do see him do that. Uh, and the crane player has nothing they could play, except for maybe that Sapuna zero, but they do pass as well. So now going into the draws, what what do you think both players are going to do here for the draws, CJ? Um, I think they're both going to be middle. Oh, no. They're both all the way wow. <laughs> up. They just want the gas. 5-5, five, five, let's go. It, I guess uh, Mechanicus Luke is playing a more of a tempo crane, so he's probably going to want a bit high, and since Travis is not playing Dishonor uh, Phoenix, he's probably going to want the cards to just gas it with Mechanicus. Yeah, I was I was with you there. Uh, the, these players are very experienced. They'll be playing very fast. We might be catching up narrating more than, than color commentary, but I, I also thought there's gonna be like a three four or four four bid, uh, or maybe like a three five bid on the on the part of Travis bidding three. But nope, full pedal to the metal on both of them. And it's always interesting when both players bid five first turn because there's kind of this expectancy that you'll keep doing that. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see if they do keep doing that or if they start slowing the bids down in subsequent turns. Yeah, and we're gonna see Travis with the first conflict. I gotta imagine that fire ring's looking pretty good right now. Uh, go ahead and try to get some honored characters to keep cranes uh, cancels offline since this crane is splashing dragon instead of phoenix they do only have the voice of honor as options for cancels yeah and not to mention um if he if he smashes fire with that naive student and the brash samurai somehow decides to come in then he's uh, he's gonna get toasted pretty fast Looks like they're thinking about some pre-conflict actions. Yeah, both players uh, going back to the honor dial and moving around a little bit. Maybe trying to see who's going to blink first. They're just probably looking at all their options. Both uh, Crane and Phoenix tend to be a little trickier clans out of their hand. They have a lot of options to manipulate um, conflicts. And since they both drew five... Uh, five cards, they have uh, a lot to work with here. One interesting thing here is that... Um, okay, so Travis passed the first conflict, it, it appears. So we're looking at the second at the second conflict going back to Crane. Um, the interesting thing here for Crane, on my, uh, in my observation at least, is that they didn't take the Doji Challenger. Uh, usually whenever I see Challenger, I'm like all over that, right? But... Uh, they decided not to. We see a wave of the crane come out to honor Asami. 
bring her to a three military, five political character. And if she has more political than you, then she drains an honor. Um, so I'll be interesting to see uh, Mechanicus's strategy here for Asami. Um, I I'm with you there, CJ, though. It seems like maybe like a poke with naive student would have been really strong for that first conflict, take fire or, or something. But uh, the Travis problem is he would have had... He would have had to uh, like pre-fan or do something ahead of time to poke with naive student because otherwise he's just going to get bowed, and that's a, investing a fan here against Crane for a poke feels lackluster, yeah, particularly feels on a one-cost unit that's in assassinate range when neither of them moved on or in the bidding phase. Yeah, and Void Circuit's pointing out here too that passing the first conflict. Here's what he said: passing the first conflict makes a lot of sense. Watering counter would be too dangerous. Um, yeah, I can see that. I think that's one of the things you see with players, especially even veteran players, but newer players a lot. You, you kind of feel like, oh, it's my conflict, so I'm going to make a conflict, right? It can be very hard to be disciplined and say, I'm going to pass here. Yeah, sometimes, uh, whether it's the cards you have on board or the cards in hand, you're in a better position to respond to what, uh, what your opponent does and attacking into their full board and giving them all of the options about how they want to respond is just too risky of a proposition. So we see... I believe that was a political challenge to begin with, right? Did he go in political or did he go in military and it flipped? Maybe he I've got to imagine he went in political. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. But Travis flipped the ring a couple of times and I just missed it. So if, if chat knows, let us know. But uh, yeah, I thought that was a, a political. Maybe he was thinking about switching it to military and decided not to because then he could defend with the knife student to not lose the honor. Yeah, I mean, there's the assassination. Yeah, I think he was thinking about switching it. But here, if he had put it on military, he couldn't have defended with the naive student. Yeah, exactly. So we do see him come out, assassinate that uh, brash samurai. The voice of honor is on. Oh, it was on. She got court games for shamed. So yeah, now it's yeah, off. that was a good play by Travis. Yep, using the using uh, for shame to let her just take the honor off. Uh, Crane uses their stronghold to bow the snipe student, as you do, and then he just assassinated the brash samurai, so yep. he will get a full open attack. Yeah, now we see a Mir Miramoto's Fury come out, and that goes ahead and negates this uh, attack from Asami as well. I've got to imagine uh, Mechanic is probably not feeling super great about that for shame if he has a voice of honor in hand, though you have to imagine if he had the voice in hand, he'd probably just voice the for shame, because he knows bad stuff is coming after that. Uh, so that line of play went really well for Travis. Uh, he got the board cleared. Now he gets an unopposed with Masahiro on Shameful Ooh, Display. that's a really good one to hit. Yeah, that is amazing for Travis. Now the question is, is there a steward in hand of, of Mechanicus? Uh, or a Tattooed Wanderer, even? If, if so, I'd imagine he drops it here. Maybe not, though, because he's challenging with fire. Uh, that cannot be played. Nope. Yeah, that can't be played. This is a military conflict? There you go. Looks like they noticed. Yep. Maybe? He didn't pick the card up. <laughs> Shush, we have a judge. So there it goes. Like, looks like the judge caught that for them, for us. So. It totally doesn't have that in hand. And here yeah, we so... see the magnificent kimono which will honor him and allow him to use the fire ring to dishonor, dishonor Kakita Asami. Asami. Yeah. And which is we... brutal with uh, the crane or the Phoenix stronghold being able to add to glory to a character uh, yeah. that can be added to the opponent's character to bring them down too further when they are dishonored. Yeah. So uh, Travis has to be feeling pretty good about this turn. He went in, he got the kimono on, he got an honored Masahiro, got the break, got rid of that doji challenger. Yeah, there was a lot of good stuff that happened to him there. Um, one thing, did he pay for that Miramoto's Fury? He had, uh, oh yeah, yeah, he did, because for shame yeah. is free. He was at two, and now he's at one. 
He's going to keep the orator. I know that uh, that Travis loves the orator somewhat controversially. Some people uh, dislike her because she is a, what is it, a 1-2 base for 3. But her action can just send people home, which is pretty sweet. Yeah, I feel like with Phoenix, you're always going to be overpaying for your stats. Um, and that ability is one of the better ones. Yeah, although it can come back to bite you. But uh, with an experienced player like like Travis... I wouldn't expect him to send someone home in a, in a situation that's going to be overly painful for him. So we see some good flops come out on both sides. We see Hotaru for the crane, uh, as well as the Asahina Storyteller, uh, Guest of Honor, and Imperial Storehouse. So unfortunately, he can't really buy two of these characters, or if he does, he could do the Storyteller and the Guest of Honor, but they're not going to stick around. And then for Travis, he's got the Shiba Yojimbo, which Phoenix loves, Solemn Scholar, Asako Diplomat, Diplomat, <laughs> and Radiant Orid, Orid Hor. So uh, some pretty good synergy here. We see him bust out the Yojimbo to protect the Shigenja right off the bat. Uh, as well as the Guest of Honor with two on the Crane side, so I'd expect to see a pass. Uh, Crane probably not feeling great about all the high-cost characters they're seeing right here at the start. You'd like to have a little bit more of a balanced curve. Uh, do you think that we'll see that Psalm Scholar come out? Yeah, we. I th I think he will. No, not not with one. He won't play it. It'll be the diplomat. Void Void Circuit saying definitely we're definitely going to see the orator this turn. Uh, we saw the diplomat instead, and we do see Mechanicus go down to. One. I hmm. think we're going to see a Cloud the Mind on the Guest of Honor here. That is a very real possibility, and if that's the if that's the case, then that is going to be very painful for Mechanicus. Travis going low on Honor to keep the draw engine going. So we see another wave of the crane. That's the second one. Uh, in as many turns, to bring Asami back to neutral so she's not completely useless. Uh, unfortunately, that doesn't turn on Voice of Honor, although even if he'd honored the Guest of Honor, it'd still be off because Masahiro is honored as well. So that firing challenge, turn one, you called it. Uh, very, very potent play in that first turn. And um, Mechanicus had a chance to turn it off, maybe, but... You know, he couldn't have foreseen Amirmo's Fury and a first shame and, and all of the hurt that came his way that first turn. Yeah, that turn could not have gone better for Travis. Yeah, it had pretty much everything he wanted, including hitting Shameful Display with his first attack <laughs> and the kimono. If it had been any other province, yeah, he would have been honored, but he wouldn't have been able to break unless he... I mean, he could have some fans in hand, too. Maybe he's got some secret tech. Yeah, I mean, he he could have had some cards in hand to break, but also hitting the shameful display without two participants in the conflict is a huge uh, benefit to to you in this matchup. Because not only does dishonor hurt Phoenix more so than it hurts pretty much any other clan, but the honor helps Crane arguably more than it helps any other clan. Mm -hmm. Chat saying, uh, yeah, Tsuke saying, I think it's a good, I think this is the right move for Crane to switch to dishonor. Uh, I would tend to agree. I mean, that first turn really went poorly for him. He makes a Dishonor switch, bleeds some Honor out. He'll bleed one more from Asami most likely this turn, either on defense or on attack. Um, bring him down to three. If he can get an unopposed air ring somehow, he could bring him down to one. That's probably not likely since he's down on uh, characters and bo really board state. Uh, but we'll see. He has three fates, so he could have a political rival at hand, and then he could covert past for the last attack. Um, to get that unopposed air ring. It'll be very interesting seeing how what, what tools he has for Dishonor. It depend If Travis gets another fate here, uh, you have to try to go for the unopposed with the Guest of Honor, I think, somehow. Because otherwise that air ring is just going to get a uh, display of powered, most likely. And instead of stealing one, then the Phoenix player is just going to gain two Honor, which puts it even that much further out of reach. 
Ah, you are correct. And we know that Travis loves his display of power, he talks about it, and uses it quite effectively. So we see the Guest of Honor instead <laughs> making this attack uh, by herself on Rally to the Cause. We know that Travis can't play any events, but he could cloud her mid-battle, which would be quite unfortunate unless there's a let go at play. Yeah, I think um, with this many cards, Travis should have seen a uh, a Cloud the Mine already. He runs three. He's drawn 15 cards. There's a high likelihood that he has it. Yeah. And we see a Steward of Law come out on the side of Mechanicus, and he goes ahead and puts a Fate on him. Mechanic is really enjoying that Void Ring this game. We saw him, his first conflict was Void, his second conflict was is now Void. Uh, I've been talking with some players, talking about the rings, and there's a few who think that the Void Ring is the worst ring. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, I think the Void Ring can sometimes be a trap. I think it's, it's really great. Uh, my thoughts on it are a little skewed because I'm a Lion player. And so usually it's really good for me and not super amazing for my opponent because I have ways to fate out of hand um, even after a Void Ring attack and I just don't fate guys very heavily to begin with. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think sometimes people tunnel too hard on it and focus a lot on clearing the board when not ask they don't ask like what else could I do if I didn't clear the board and would that help me manage the board better than just getting rid of this character? Because sometimes your opponent's fate, uh, they fate weird things or they fate like a two cost that's not going to stick around. And I think a lot of times me as a player, I tunnel on the void ring too much sometimes just mm -hmm. to clear the board since I know I have stuff sticking around or I know I'll flop into cheap dudes and they have a lower chance of doing that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm guilty of the same thing. I mean, my, my, my um, secret pleasure is the earth ring. I'll turn on the Earthring sometimes too much just because I'm like, card advantage, yeah, I'm going to win. Uh, but, you know, then the board can get away from you or vice versa. If you're tunneling too much on Void, then you can you can have the board, but then you lose a Fate advantage or card advantage. And that's one of the things that makes L5R so fun to play is you, you're rarely behind in all, all the resources, right? Between cards, provinces, Fate, Honor, board state. There's almost always somewhere where even if you're losing, you're ahead in something. Yeah, I think um, for me personally, like the fire ring is big. It's one that I've been taking. The more I play, the more I like the fire ring. Um, the water ring, I don't take a whole lot, but I've seen Crane do some really good things with it. Um, and then obviously, since Lion's Keeper of the Earth, I go for Earth a lot as well. Yeah, Earth is Earth is one I of think, my favorites. Yeah, I think that's the big the biggest distinction for me that I see new players that I think they could learn from is that if you're going for like honor or dishonor strats, a lot of times the fire ring and the air ring serve similar purposes, except the fire ring helps you also control the board while bleeding them from honor. Yeah. Um, people tunnel the air ring, especially against Scorpion, whereas the fire ring is a much better decision most of the time. Yeah, players asking in chat, what happened to Mechanicus is two fate. That is a good question. He's not played anything that costs two fate. So I'll ping our friendly judge and see if they uh, if they can enlighten us. He put a steward of law out and put a fate on it, right? He did, but he had three fate to start the turn and he attacked Void Ring, um, okay. which had a fate so on it because it went back after his guy got bowed out turn one. So, so he, he had he had four fate, yeah, and then he spent two, so he should sub two. Yeah, so I pinged our judge. We'll see. Uh, we'll see what they have to say. I think the judge just pinged LT. Maybe you see. Yeah, you see where the fate go and the hand movement. Now, now we see the fate come back. So, thank you, chat, for uh, noticing the two fate had disappeared. That is a that would be quite unfortunate if if the players and judge didn't notice that. Taxed by the emperor, Suke Isawa says. Yes, exactly. Uh, chat also going through some of the lines they could do here. Um, dishonor via court games. You can bow the dip, the diplomat with the crane box, which could have been protected by the Yojimbo. 
Um, but Travis might be saving the Ojimbo effect for, uh, an, you know, to counter an assassination or a court games or something like that that's maybe more impactful than a, a bow. So, interesting. So we see the court games come out from Mechanicus and, uh, and it forces the effect onto Masahiro. But that is the effect that we will see get blocked by the Ojimbo. So for those of for all our viewers, the Ojimbo has an interrupt when the effects of a triggered ability targets a Shigenja you control would initiate, cancel those effects. If we look at court games, it is an event, but all events are actions. So they are technically triggered effects. So that is why the Ojimbo was able to just blow out that court games, which feels bad for Mechanicus. It's not the end of the world, but it definitely doesn't feel great. Yeah, and so that's why we saw the um, Steward of Law come down there, because it prevented uh, Travis from selecting the Asako Diplomat as his target for the court games, or oh, as the yeah. character he controls. <laughs> Sorry. Man, we are, we're about 1,000 today. Uh, I'm yeah. going to reach out to the judge again. Court games cannot be Yojimboed because it is not targeting a Shigenja. You have it, to choose it wasn't Yojimboed, I don't believe. I mean, uh, the Asako Masahiro been. has no honor. Yeah, but from the uh, so if he had court games to dishonor, Masahiro would have gone to neutral, and then he lost the conflict, so he'd go to dishonored. Oh, because the pr uh, pr but the uh, steward of law would yeah, prevent him, right? Because pride happens point. during the conflict. Yeah, I do believe so. We saw the arrow come out indicating the Ojimbo was used. Um, it is a moot point because he would end up neutral, but I believe that the players there played that the court games was canceled, which is not the case. All right, we see another Miramoto's Fury come out All to just bow this Yojimbo. <laughs> I should name this game the Fast and the Furious. Saw the Furies coming out on both sides. Now, an interesting thing with that first attack from Mechanicus is that he declared it political but didn't commit a Sami. Uh, and I can see why he did that, but now that he had the Miramotus Fury in hand, maybe he wanted to commit her? Because it's highly unlikely that uh, with For Honor that uh, Travis is going to do him any favors and attack in, you know, play a conflict character to attack in politically and have yet another honor sap from him. Yeah, I think that that's that's a missed opportunity, especially here when you are uh, getting you have him down to four honor. Any honor that you can bleed here is going to be extremely helpful. Except you're in that scary space where, yes, the Phoenix has no nothing to uh, block with, but he does have two fate, which is exactly how much display of power costs. Yep, yep, and we could see. Uh... You don't want to go air here, really. I mean, see, that's the, the catch-22 with Phoenix is you really want to go air here, right? Because you want to take that two honor, for one for unopposed and one from the air ring. But if he has display, display of power, which is highly likely, then he's going to go up to six instead, and this is a, a meaningless attack. But I, th I mean, I think you have to do it. Yeah, I don't think it's meaningless, because here he will go up to, he'll go down one for the undefended, so he'll only be at five overall, so yeah, he went up one instead of down one, but you're also getting two fate out of his bowl for it. Yeah, so we see, uh... Travis just lets it go. Huh, seems like Travis just lets it go. Yeah, we see chat saying maybe, maybe LT's holding court games plus voice, which would be great, but he can't court games again uh, in a military conflict. We've seen Against the Waves come out. Travis uh, is a great player, played against him a few times, but I, I believe that he uses Against the Waves more effectively than anyone else I've ever seen. We see him going at Hotaru's province, which is Manicured Garden, with that Masahiro, who is a four-strength political. Uh, Mechanicus has three fate, so he could potentially drop a political rival here. But it looks like he's just going to give up the break. Wow, that is painful. He just gives up the break, loses Hotaru. Masahiro gets honored again. 
Did he even take the fate from the manicure garden? Um, it doesn't look like it. Yeah, because he was at two, that's, that's... and then he challenged with air, which had a fate on it. Yeah, so yeah. he would have been a four. Yeah, that's a good thing to know. I know, like a lot of times when I'm in tournaments, um, I'll be like anxious to get past a, a conflict because it's really bad for me and I'm tilting or whatever it is. And I'm just like, okay, yeah, I don't have any actions. Just do it, whatever. Um, don't forget your triggers. I know I've forgotten a manicured gardens trigger a couple times. I know I've forgotten. The one that hurts the most is when you forget a meditations on the Dow trigger. Yeah. So chat, chat informing us, chat the real MVP. Um, the first attack with the Yojimbo is what revealed that manicured gardens and he used it at that time. Oh, he did. Okay. Yeah. So he did use there it. There we go. Yeah. So he couldn't trigger it again. Unfortunately, the rules of the game. Uh, so we yeah, see I didn't Travis realize that here. That... Yeah, I didn't realize it either. So we're doing we're doing a bang up job here, being really really observant of the board state. But that's that's my bad. Ooh. So we see uh, we see the library come out for Travis, and he goes in and plays that solemn scholar. Then there's another diplomat as well as that orator who's been here all game. You know. Travis just taunting Mechanicus, saying, hey, I've got this orator, and she's going to come down sometime. Uh, we see another Hotaru get flopped and played by Luke uh, slash Mechanicus. Yeah, that's going to uh, be a huge, huge character for him. Uh, with Travis just kind of not really flopping anything uh, that has a ton of power, Hotaru is basically going to get to come in with uh, Luke. Uh, no, Luke's going second this time. So yeah, so it does become very dangerous now uh, with Hotaru and Asami on the air ring. Yeah, the other thing that could happen here. So if you look, so Luke is second. Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised if Travis passes here the first conflict though. But if Luke has a political rival here, that would be absolutely devastating. Because he can just covert one of uh, either the probably the orator, so no one gets sent home, uh, run in, and it's not going to be unopposed, but he can resolve it twice and take one with Asami, and that's the game. Uh, I, f you do let that go unopposed, right? Because then you can display a power display with two faith. Power. Um, you yeah, you could yeah, and that would be much better you... because then you say not today, Hotaru. Yeah, I think that's what has to happen. So Phoenix still not in the worst spot. I feel like with if you're Crane, you make him prove it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you say, show me. Show me that display of power you got, especially right. since yeah. we're likely to see one-to-one -one draws here since Travis knows what what's going on now. And he's got the library out too, so he'll get an extra draw. Unfortunately for Mechanicus, he's used both of those way of the crane and has no honored characters on the board. And furthermore, he would need to... Ooh, that seems rough for Travis, though. So he just spent his last two fate. He's going to go Earth Ring and pick up two more here. for Almost for sure. Yeah, we see one to one. And I think you're right. I'd be highly su surprised if he does not go Earth Ring as well. Because then he'll also turn on the Solemn Scholar if he gets that. So he can go ahead and bow an attacking character. So Phoenix can do some pretty nasty things here. The The problem with this, though, is that Cloud the Mind also costs one. And so if Luke attacks with Hotaru, Asami, and the Guest of Honor, he can steal an Honor with Asami, yep. and then double resolve the Air Ring. Yep. Now, and he could have a let go in hand, too, because he has Dragon Splash. So even if he gets uh, in that in that scenario, you know. Um, Travis would have some fate left. He would know he can't display of power, so he would probably cloud Hotaru, right, to prevent the the lock game loss. But then, correct, you could potentially have a let go that just ends the game for you. We see him hit meditations on the Tau, where that favorable ground is. So he needs five to break, and that Yojimbo is going to lose her fate, which is unfortunate for Travis. But I think if Travis lives to fight another turn, he'll be happy with this exchange. So. Yeah, so Phoenix with, let's see how many cards here in hand. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11 cards in hand again. Yeah, and he's, he was at 11 most of the game. You have to think that he's seen at least one display of power here. Oh, yeah, but I, I think you still make him prove it. 
So we see a court game's come out. Oh, that's a for shame, sorry. 10,000 foot view, probably should zoom in a little bit. Yeah, so we see the for shame come out, hits the Yojimbo, he's thinking about what to do. He takes the owner off rather than bowing. Generally, I'm in favor of bowing, but as always, it's always a it's always a, a call of what you want what you want to do. The interesting thing here is that now, if Mechanicus can get honored somehow, Voice of Honor is all of a sudden back on. So it's six to one. We see that Steward defending, just so he doesn't lose uh, he doesn't lose an honor and a turn on for shame. I suspect we'll see the Earth Ring go off. Uh, which is highly unfortunate for Mechanicus because that means that the Scholar can fire. But I guess if he, like you said, if he attacks with Hotaru, Guest of Honor, and Asami, he doesn't really care if his characters are bowed. He cares that their abilities get to go off and, and win him the game. Yeah, I think that that's, that's really what has to happen here. I don't know, uh, other than a Cloud the Mine on Hotaru, I don't know what Travis can do about Mechanicus swinging in here, basically with his board on the air ring. Uh, what he could do is, uh, first off, he could have two Cloud the Mines. That, that would be pretty rage inducing. But if he if he does, I kind of I almost would have liked to have seen that Steward of Law get favorable grounded out, <laughs> even though. Um, if Me if Mechanicus has an assassinate though, he can assassinate the Solemn Scholar. Here uh, is he pass it already? If he hasn't passed, he, if he hasn't assassinate, he could assassinate the Sol Solemn Scholar, which would turn Cloud the Mind off. Yeah, it looks like they have. And we see Noble Sacrifice come out of hand from the Earth Ring. Um, but what Travis could do is he could uh, Cloud the Mind the Guest of Honor. Ah, we see Way of the Phoenix come out on the Air Ring. So it'll prevent the immediate loss. And the Ojimbo hasn't fired yet this turn either. So you can see a, a firing here, but Travis has basically just guaranteed himself at least the end of this turn. I would still expect to see a Hotaru Asami attack. Um, it'd be interesting to see if there is a, a political rival here to try and make this unopposed or not. But if Hotaru wins with fire, she can double this honor, the Diplomat and the Ojimbo, who are both leaving play. Neither of them is a Shigenja, so it'll still go off. And then at the end of the turn is when is when Travis would would lose. Yeah, but if you're going to do that, you have to come in uh, with Guest of Honor because otherwise you're going to get uh, Display of Powered, and both of those characters are going to end up honored, I think. And he'll go back up to five, and that dishonor victory just becomes that much further uh, away from happening. Yeah, no, it's a good point. It's a good point. Although it would only be. It'd only be one of the characters, right? That's true. That's true because he is—he's not getting the double resolve on the steel. Yeah, but still, going up to four here when you thought he was going down to two or one or zero is is definitely mentally taxing. Um, Kift also pointing out that Travis can just swing back for air now since he has guaranteed that he will not instantly lose this turn, which is a great point. Um, Yeah, so Chad asking, fire is okay, right? Dishonor Asako and Shiba, then Asami. Yeah, that's the, that's the line of play we were just discussing. So they could do that. Um, Mechanicus could attack fire, and then he could dishonor all of the non-Shigenja um, with no fate on them. But um, Travis will still have the air ring available to him since he did wave the Phoenix it. Um, but the Crane Stronghold has not been used, and the Crane Stronghold can bow... The Psalm Scholar, although it cannot bow the Radiant Orator right now because she is uh, four, four power, four strength. And with the uh, Phoenix Stronghold, she could go up to six. So we see lots of hand waving, some discussions. I think uh, Luke is thinking about what challenge he wants to make here. And who he wants to make it with. Yeah, the interesting thing. Because if you here, go all in here, then you're just going to get an air ring hit back, and the yep. dishonor is not going to close the game. Yeah, it might be interesting for Luke to keep Asami back 
although she's not honored, so that doesn't help. And now that orator is now six, so that takes that off the board. Did Luke pass his conflict? I think they're still in the pre-conflict stage. When they've been passing conflicts, Luke has been putting it in chat, and I didn't see that come up. So I think uh, Travis is first player. So Travis may have just used his box first, and they're in, still in the pre-conflict action window. I can't. But it's imagine. Mechanicus's conflict, right? Yes. But the Phoenix box is only till the end of the phase, right? It's to the end of the it's to the end of the phase, yeah. But the the whole conflict phase. So he can use it now without any repercussion on the on the orator. Oh, it looks like Mechanicus maybe okay. did pass his did pass I'm his conflict. I'm just curious though. why he would do that here. Um, I. I think it's if he attacks with the. I'm not sure actually. Better, better Phoenix players than us. Let us know why. Uh, why Travis would use the Phoenix stronghold here? Oh, it looks like he, it looks like he's on attack. That's. I still. So maybe the players are talking it out. That's and one of the things with our setup is we we don't have, the. No, no, we see the stronghold flip here, so. Yeah, so my guess is that he wants to do it uh, because, yeah, number one, uh, at two, no, because, yeah, Fury's offline no matter what. But then also, uh, he has to commit a lot more to use Asami as the first action. Yeah, so Solemn Scholar is interesting. Um, uh, but he's not even putting the orator in here, he's just poking. Yeah, I think I think uh, I think he's poking so he can see what's under the box, and then I think that Travis wants to ensure that he's not going to lose this turn by keeping the orator back, so he won't have an unopposed. That very scenario we were discussing of unopposed into double fire, um, the orator could send someone home because now she is for glory, and that might be one of the reasons why he did it too. So a Hotaru attack, I mean Hotaru would just get sent home immediately. But even on the side of, of Mechanicus, like knowing that the Orator can send people home, I still would have made that first attack because the worst case scenario, you attack with Hotaru, you attack with the Guest of Honor, you attack with Asami, and one of them gets sent home. Um, I guess the worst case scenario is you lose, so never mind. <laughs> because then the crackback uh, Phoenix could just take your stronghold. So we see this defense of just Asami and the favor. So we saw Asami already vamp the honor. So Travis is down to two. I believe it's back to his action. Lots of hand waving going around. So they're talking about something. Uh, if you if you admit defeat on the orator, she's still participating, so you, she could still send someone home. And you can't assassinate her. She can't send someone home because she would not be ready. And oh, you're right. Her she's not text is yeah, yeah, yeah. ready. Yep. Ready participating glory. You are correct. And Chad is correct too. Welcome to the Rega's wrong about everything stream today, folks, where I will spew incorrect knowledge of the game. At every opportunity. Yeah, I think uh, Phoenix ha is my least played against clan. Yeah, I'd probably say the same. There's not many Phoenix players in my area, so I have to rely on on playing online to get my Phoenix experience. So we see the last yeah, honor maybe. of that guest of honor be being excuse me the last fate on that guest of honor being vamped off with the void ring. And now we have the final conflict of the phase. Uh, and this is going to be rough for Mechanicus, unless he has a, another conflict character. Uh, Hotaru will probably get bowed, and Guest of Honor will get sent home by the Orator, or vice versa, it doesn't really matter. Um, I, I guess the better play is actually to send Hotaru home, because then she can't double trigger if somehow you win the, if somehow Mechanicus wins the conflict.
Um, yeah, sure. Ty brings up a good point. Why was the uh, why was the stronghold not used? I don't know. It might be because Yojimbo's here, and I don't think Yojimbo's been activated this turn yet. So, uh, Mechanicus might have just been saying it's it's just going to cancel anyway. So I'll save it in case I in case I need it, I guess. But uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think you still probably use it there. Um, yep, there's the admit defeat. So I think, I mean, our judge is, our judge is there. So I think, so Travis just pinged the orator instead of the, yeah, exactly. So Travis did ping the orator first to send Hotaru home. And then he's going to ping the... You, you cannot because you don't have more standing glory. No, but she, she would wasn't... have four to Hotaru's three and the guest of honor. Yeah, but so uh, you had to bow with the solemn scholar and then admit defeat comes out. Is that true? She's at right. She's at four. You're right. You're right. You're right. She's at four, four to four, and she has to be so she... more. You're right. You're exactly right. Yes. So that is not possible. They're talking through it right now. So unless he can find a way to pull this order out, I believe he's going to lose this game. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, so I think what I think the phasing that Travis was thinking was the same thing that I was thinking, where he could send Hotari home first, but it's not a tie. Um, nope. and, and you do have four to four, so he can't send her home. So she gets bowed instead. But now you bow her. Uh, there's lots of hers here. Excuse me. <laughs> you bow the orator with admit defeat. And now she can't send anybody home. And then you get blown out because you get double dishonored, and that's the game. And unfortunately for Travis, the the with the orator, an, an interesting play is he could have removed the void, the the fate from his own orator if he saw this line of play. That maybe that's maybe that's stupid in in hindsight, but that would be a very interesting play because then he would have one honor going into the next turn. Yep, and it looks like so that is the final conflict of the turn. We do have the the uh, the last action window before the conflict phase ends. So maybe there's something, but I, I can't really think of anything that Phoenix has to prevent this dishonor going off. Can you? I cannot. Yeah, if only they could. Uh, yeah, order has a fate on her though, so she yeah. can't. Yep, yep. So it looks like that's a that's a GG. That line of play with removing the fade off your own orator, I mean, that was, that's a little facetious. I don't, I don't think that. Well, that's yeah, really something you would have done, but it, you know, it's a, it's a possibility. I think it was just a miscalculation on Travis's end, um, or he just said prove that you had the admit defeat, and yeah. Mechanicus did. Yep. Oh, he didn't because he didn't even have the. Oh, he did have the display of power. That seems like the safest line of play to just not defend. Yeah, and you, you lose one. You display a power to honor those two, yep. and you go and back you up two, to and you go back to three. What? Because you'd lose one and go down yeah. to one because he was at two, and then you gain two and go back to three. Live to fight another turn. Yeah, I, I think you're right. Um, and he didn't need the provinces there because he was ahead three bricks to. It would have been that was the first brick that Mechanicus was going to get, and then you were going to go. Travis would have gone second the next turn, but he knows what's under the stronghold and its entrenched position, which isn't overly problematic for him. Um, but yeah, I mean that was that was a very good game. Very yeah. Intense. Yeah, I think it was just a miscalculation on his part, or like I said, I I think he was just trying to call Mechanicus's bluff, and Mechanicus was not bluffing. Yeah, exactly. And we see, thank you, chat. Chat's been very very helpful today. Uh, Dishonor crushing the cut. That is correct. We've seen a handful of Dishonor wins. Uh, Dishonor wins have been far more prevalent in the cut than in the Swiss. In the Swiss, it was like single-digit percentages. We we didn't really track it. It wasn't on our on our forms, which it will be next season. Um, but there are very few reports of dishonor victories even in the cut in, in the Swiss. But now in the cut, we've seen a handful of dishonor victories already. We're not even through the round of sixteen yet. And yeah, I think uh, people are still figuring out this game. They're still figuring out the bids. Um, they want to be greedy up front and think that there's not enough honor, dishonor pressure. I know I hear that a lot as a lion player that honor lion isn't really there. Well, you can win, still win games with it. 
um, even though you think it's not quite there. Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you, everybody, for watching this match. Uh, as pointed out in chat by Void Circuit, the lower seed has won every single match to this point. Uh, that is quite quite remarkable, and we'll see if the trend continues tomorrow uh, when we have our final two matches of the top 16. We have Shutrev versus, uh, uh, versus Heinzel and Heinzel. the other game. Yep. And game? Gravy, Gravy K versus, versus yeah. uh QQ, or I can't remember. It's like QK yeah, something. Q K I E U. Yeah, if you know how to pronounce it, let us know. I will say QQ until I am uh, until I'm proven otherwise. Yeah, so those should be two good matches. I know I'm excited to see another lion playing the top cut. Oh, and and chat pointing out one more mistake. Uh, this one is just in the seating though. Um, Eigen Sheep at seven did beat Refpod at ten. So he Eigen Sheep is the only higher seed who has won his game. So it's uh whatever that math is there's two games left there's eight so it's five and five and one for the lower seed not too bad yeah that's uh lower seeds representing it. and the lower seeds uh so far really until until this game have been lower played clans we've seen the crabs and the lion win which are both only have two clans in yeah yeah so they're they're doing pretty well we do have two cranes in so far and we'll see if any more get in um Finally, shout out to our judge, Insanity Rises. I usually do that at the start of the stream. Sorry, Insanity. We're doing it here. Uh, Insanity Rises was our judge here, and he caught a lot of that stuff, caught the fate, um, as well as the court games play and all of that. So a huge shout out to our judges. Kift was watching here. He's often a judge as well. So thank you guys for judging. I know it can be hard dedicating the time, being in the chat, but uh, uh, we're, we thank you for your efforts. Thank you for watching. And like we said, we'll have two more games tomorrow, and then we'll start the top eight cut. Uh, on Wednesday, we'll stick stick to the same schedule both this week and next week. It'll be one one week duration, and then we'll probably do the top four and the finals in the same week in two weeks. Uh, I'm Rega, been casting with CJ. Thank you for watching, and we'll catch you again next time. Thank you, guys.